with us now. Uh, we've heard a lot about VE Day in the last couple of days and indeed the last couple of weeks um, and what it was like overseas or in Sydney, but we don't really hear too much about what it was like in Canberra. Working for the ABC at the time was Ursula Southwell. Good evening, Ursula. Oh, Jeremy. It's Rod. Rod. <laughs> Sorry. That's OK. Um, you were um, working at the ABC at the time, is that right? Yes. And what were you doing? Well, uh, I was transferred from uh, Sydney, uh, where I'd been broadcasting with 2FC and 2BL, to take over the position of uh, Regional Officer of Canberra. Uh -huh. The Canberra station was only a regional station in those days. So little has changed. Some things have changed. They, a lot of things have changed, including Canberra. What was Canberra like in 1945? Oh, um, like a country town, lovely country town. <laughs> How many people lived here? Do you know? Oh no, I don't know. Yeah. I wouldn't have. I was too young to be worried about the popular number in the population. Right. I don't know how many boys were here. <laughs> well, a lot of them would have been away at the war, obviously. Yes, no, I'm only joking. No, but, I mean, but that, you've raised an interesting point, and that is for someone your age, for example, uh, if you wanted to have a social life, it would have been pretty difficult. No, no, no. The tennis clubs were very, uh, very great, and, uh, you know, and, of course, there were a lot of uh, um, rural properties around about, and, of course, the, and there were a lot of essential services that were in Canberra that... Uh, uh, didn't take the men away because they they belonged to part of the essential services. You know what I mean? Yes. So in that way, was Canberra unusual? Oh well, I couldn't compare it uh, yeah. uh, with anywhere else. I'd been in Sydney, but uh, I knew in Sydney a lot went away, a lot of uh, young fellows. But in Canberra, I didn't know of many who did. Be well, I know a lot did, but uh, the point was I hadn't been here long enough to establish uh, rapport with uh, uh, families in Canberra. All right. So what were you doing for the ABC? Here? Yeah, in Canberra. Yes, well, uh, it was... Um, we had a studio in London Circuit uh, then, not as lavish as you've got now. Lavish? <laughs> I think not. Oh, I don't know. I can imagine they would... It, it is slightly more lavish than the one you would have worked at, but it's, it's not that lavish. <laughs> um, and your job involved doing... Well, uh, mainly it was... Uh, um, as I say, a regional station, you might know what that is now, but the program came through from 2FC in Sydney. Right. The regional stations in Newcastle, Canberra, uh, Corowa, you know, a, a regional in, uh, uh, in the state of New South Wales. Yep. And uh, then there was 2BL in Sydney, which was more or less the local station in Sydney. Yep. And uh, uh, it was a regional station, and uh, uh, most of the programs emanated from the... Uh, uh, 2FC in Sydney through to the regional station but on occasions uh, because uh, this regional station being the most important one because it was the seat of government uh, we had to do a lot of recording of uh, uh, VIPs who uh, were either uh, visiting Canberra or um, uh, members of parliament who had something to say and of course this is how it happened on uh, VE Day that uh, uh, the recordings were made here uh, of um, the people who were um, in the um, parliament at the time to uh, send to Sydney and uh, and uh, have broadcast from there because the signal wasn't strong enough from Canberra to broadcast to the nation. So when you were working at the ABC, did you find out before other people did that uh, the war was over? No, well, no, the point was that we, we'd got, I'd got the... Uh, from Don Rogers, the Prime Minister's secretary, the standby notice, uh -huh. which we, uh, which uh, I had anticipated for some time, uh, uh, judging by the news from overseas, but it was a standby notice that I got, and uh, had to uh, report to the studio immediately. Uh -huh. it was just standby at that stage, but then uh, the uh, uh, um, uh, Mr. Chifley and Mr. Menzies and Mr. Fadden came in and recorded their messages. And um, so did you get to meet these people often, uh, the Prime Minister or, or uh, Curtin or Chifley or even the dignitaries that visited Canberra? Yes, yes, indeed. They, they, that's true. Even the chairman of the BBC. Oh, really? Who was that? Lord Reith. Aha, uh -huh, the legendary Lord Reith. Legendary Lord Reith, yes. What was he like? I mean, he had all sorts of horror stories about him. Yes, I know, because uh, in, uh, when he was in Sydney, they wanted him to do a Guest of Honour broadcast. And uh, they, they, he slipped through their fingers, so they got in touch with me and said, see if you can buttonhole him up there. And did you? Yes, I did. <laughs> what, uh, how did you do that? 
Well, I went across the Hotel Canberra where he and uh, Sir Stanley Angwin were staying, his secretary, and, uh, and uh, buttonholed them and said I wondered if they do a guest upon a broadcast for us uh, at 7.15 on Sunday. You could come to the studio and record it at the time that you'd please. So uh, he, he did and came over and uh, uh, recorded it and then I put it on air from Canberra at that stage and had a lovely letter back to the general manager, Sir Charles Moses, to say that uh, uh, the way, the very uh, fine way that they were treated in Canberra. Well, that must have been a tribute to you. You must have been very proud of that. No, well, I think they were too anxious in Sydney, you know what I mean? And yeah. he, being who he was, uh, didn't um, suffer fools. <laughs> Um, what about some of the other uh, famous people that may have come through the ABC in those days? Oh, of course, it didn't come into the ABC, but we had to go out and record uh, yep. uh, the Governor-General of the day. Mm. Who was that? Duke of Gloucester. Right. Yeah. And uh, and also uh, Mr... Um, we had to go to the lodge and record Mr... Poor dear Mr Curtin uh, before he died. Uh-huh. And... Uh, and um, so uh, I can't think of any others at the time. Well, did Eleanor Roosevelt visit Canberra? I don't know, not in my time. Right. I know she came out to Australia, which surprised me, but I don't know whether she visited Canberra. So on VE Day, uh, it was obviously a day of tremendous celebration. So tell us, what was it like? Were people dancing in the street? Well, I, I can't tell you much about that because this standby message that I'd got from Don Rogers... Uh, meant early on, on VE Day meant that uh, the uh, technician who was the PMG technician in those days uh, I had uh, summoned him to come in from uh, out on the Barton Highway where he lived near the masts out there you know uh, and um, uh, it, it was a long day standing by you know yep. and uh, finally uh, they came and uh, they recorded uh, their messages the three of them and uh, after that, of course, we had an arrangement with the uh, um, 2CA in Canberra uh, that uh, recordings, they were, they were transferring uh, recordings from their mother station, 2GB in Sydney, regularly uh, from uh, Sydney. And they had a permanent arrangement with the uh, airways that they had a flight that took their uh, recordings to Sydney or from Sydney, received them from Sydney. So we had the arrangement, the ABC had an arrangement with them yep. that if wherever we had a VIP recording, we could uh, pack it up uh, adequately and, and take it over to 2CA. Mm -hmm. They would put it in with their packages to Sydney. Uh -huh. now, so you weren't actually outside uh, on VE Day? You didn't see much of the celebration? You were inside working? The point was that the standing by took so much time yeah. and they finally did this and then I had to package the things up, the acetate discs. They were 78 uh, RPM discs, um, acetate discs and uh, they had to be packed very carefully and, uh, and then I sort of hot-footed it across to 2CA for, to catch the flight to Sydney for, to, for broadcast to the station. And then I returned to the studio to straighten things up and <laughs> finally I, exhausted, I sort of returned to my place of residence Mm -hmm. fell into Civic Centre, which was alive, absolutely yeah. alive with the populace. Was all Canberra there? Oh, yes, I think so. So exuberantly and joyfully celebrating. It was wonderful to witness, but I was so tired. Um, so what about these discs, the acetate discs that you would cut? How did that work? Well, I mean, it just uh, it, it, you just sort of put the needle down on the discs and uh, it cut off the excess that it didn't want and mm -hmm. uh, you sort of swept that off the disc uh, as it uh, sort of cut into the disc and uh, they were dicey things in those days. They broke easily? Hmm? They broke easily? Break easily, but they could retrack easily. Uh-huh. Yeah? Yep. Uh, so sometimes when we played them, we had to put a weight over the spindle in the middle. Uh, we still do that here. You do that? We do, just to keep that record going around uh, on a flat surface. Um, when did you come to Canberra, Ursula? Uh, 1942. So were you here um, when John Curtin made his uh, famous We Look to America speech? Uh, that wasn't done... Uh, no, not. I don't know when he did that, but right. it wasn't done in my time. Mm. I was... I don't know when he did that, but that, no, that wasn't my time. But he came to the studios. I can remember him well. Uh, the last broadcast he did at the studios, yep. he came to the studios and he ha wasn't a well man. And, of course, the studios were upstairs on top of what is now the Charcoal Grill. <laughs> but yep. That's where the studios were. And right. he walked up those steps uh, with Don Rogers and, uh, 
and I said to him, Mr Curtin, I said, I told you, I said that if you're not feeling well that we could come to the lodge and record. And he said, I think, Mr Lynch, this will be the last time I'll come up here. And uh, he must have died very shortly after that, was it? I think so, after that particular recording. I can't, record, uh, can't remember what it was for. But uh, he didn't ever come to the studio again. Hmm. Well, did he, was he the most impressive person that you met? Uh, oh, uh, I think Mr Curtin and Mr Chifley of the, on the political scene. Yep. Uh, um, what about off the political scene, other people you might have met? Oh, Lord Reith impressed me. Uh-huh. Yes, uh, he was a very down-to-earth person and, uh, oh, I can't recall any others now because I didn't anticipate being up. <laughs> <laughs> so how long did you work for the ABC? Uh, I worked, uh, I went there initially to Radio Australia uh, for the shortwave, uh, not Radio Australia, the shortwave broadcasts mm. that were done from Sydney because I knew languages. Uh -huh. And uh, from there, uh, as, as a, a clerical person with languages, not broadcasting. Mm -hmm. But after they transferred to Melbourne, uh, I, um, I then uh, was asked to uh, do an announcing audition and uh, got onto their radio stations in Sydney. And uh, how long um, after the war were you working for the ABC? A long time? Uh, no, I was transferred back to Sydney after the war uh, in 1940, nearly 46. And uh, I'd met my husband-to-be here in Campbell. We were married in 47. Uh -huh. In those days you had to leave the uh, public service if you, if you married. Well, thank God that's changed. Yes, yes. No, you had to leave. Yeah. And now, have you uh, living in Canberra these days? Yeah, uh, yes, now. Hmm. Pretty all my life. Uh, so, what's your overriding memory of? Have you been celebrating? I mean, have you been to any of the celebrations or, uh, over the last couple of days? No, I'm not long out of hospital. <laughs> oh, well, I hope you're feeling better, Ursula. No, I'm, the voice is strong, but <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm well. But uh, now I haven't really. But uh, uh, just the same. I mean, it was enough then, and uh, I was younger then and able to celebrate. And, and the funny part about it was, I was witnessing all this celebration in uh, Civic Centre. Uh, on, on VE Day, and as I was exhausted walking home to my place of residence, and it was my birthday. Oh, really? Today's your birthday? Huh? Is today your birthday? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah. Mm. Well, happy birthday. No, 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 I'm not, not indicating that, but I'm just saying... Well, I'm saying, I mean, it was my birthday on Saturday, so... Oh, well done to you, too. <laughs> yeah, you know, birthdays, it's sort of the time of year for it, isn't it? Time of year for celebration. Yes, I think so, too, and... Uh, I will celebrate too because my son's coming down soon from Queensland and we'll, we'll celebrate the birthday. Well, uh, can I recommend if you're feeling up to it, you go along to the time tunnel at the Canberra Theatre yes. because it would certainly bring back a lot of memories for you, I'm sure. Yes. Uh, for, uh, yes, living in those times. And uh, yes. I, we actually got a call from Roger Smead who was running it there. He said um, the, it was originally only going to be opened over the weekend. Now it's going to be open all the way up until next Sunday. Wonderful. Ten uh, till four every day, ten till five on weekends, Wonderful. and um, I'm sure you'd enjoy it, Ursula. Sure, yes. I mean, <laughs> it'll make me feel my age, though. No, I think it'll bring back plenty of memories and make you feel like a girl again. I'll go on with you. <laughs> Thanks very much, Ursula. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Bye-bye. That's Ursula Southwell. She was working for the ABC on uh, VE Day and met Mr Curtin and Mr Chifley and Lord Reith. Uh, OK, well, it's uh, ooh, five and a half minutes to eight o'clock. After eight o'clock, Robert Talkins from the ACT News.